Good morning, everyone. It's, what day is it? It's Thursday. No, 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 no. It is, um, it is Saturday, the 4th of January. And I've had my breakfast, um, but I'm heading outside because it's going to be a really hot day today. So I wanted to, just getting my shoes on, I'm wanting to go and make sure I water all my plants before it gets too hot. It's going to be 34 degrees today and apparently it's going to be a really bad day for the bushfires, which is concerning. I think watering your plants in the morning is a good way to minimize the amount of evaporation that happens later on during the day. So um, I'm going to do that now. Silver sword is quite big and I think it's it gets quite thirsty so I'm gonna water or its base. We've seen that a couple of days ago I made this moss pole for it and it actually I think it's probably because it's summer but it dries out quite quickly so because we're outdoors so how I like to keep this moss pole moist to encourage encourage more aerial roots to come up is I always like to just sort of start from the top and you just water it and just make it so that the water runs down through the pole. Gosh guys it's it's leaning over it's tipping. That's how I water the moss pole. I feel like it needs a bit more stability it's like the leaning the leaning moss pole. So when I water the top, I like how it drops down to the plants down at the bottom. How I've arranged my greenhouse is the ones that can, the plants that can take full light sit up here and then the shade loving plants or plants that need partial shade going to the bottom. Also, the plants that need a bit more humidity also go down to the bottom here because when I water from the top, I like that the water drips down below so it sort of mimics the type of environment these guys like to be in like this is an anthurium anthurium grassa grassia and it's an epiphilic plant which clings onto other plants in the rainforest so this type of water so the water dripping onto it, it sort of mimics what it's like being in a rainforest and also back there I've got you'll know that I've got my fern Got a tassel fern there, my calatheas. Oh, guys, I don't think I've shown you my calathea network. So my calathea network is another calathea I have. I think I have a care video on him, but he was an indoor plant before because he's a very precious calathea to me, only because look at this beautiful foliage. And I thought, given it's warmer now, I thought you might like it if I kept you outside during the summer with my other calatheas because my other calatheas seem to like it in here. Seem to be doing quite well. So I thought I'd put him there. I've had to make more space for him though. Oh guys, have you seen? I don't think I've shown you my Gloriosum. Oh, guys, 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 guys. This was my first ever, like sort of, my first ever tropical velvety plant. I remember this plant was, it's still kind of going off. I mean, it still retails, you can, for bigger ones, mind you, mine's a small one, so this is probably 40 bucks now. But there was a time when this guy was like 120 for a big one, which is crazy. This is its older leaf, oldest leaf. I think it's nearing to its end. It's got four new leaves. Well, four leaves now. This one was a baby leaf that didn't get enough water when it was when it was growing up. Also, what is this? Are these freaking mealy bugs? Guys, what the F? Alright, so I'm gonna get rid of these mealy bugs. What I don't have is I don't have neem oil to extract them. So what I might have to do is just I have to wipe them off. Ugh, guys, mealy bug. Alright guys, let me finish watering and then let's get rid of these mealy bugs. 
All right, guys, so I actually don't have all the equipment here to get rid of the mealy bug. <gasps> what do I do? So I ran out of um, alcohol to swab the mealy bugs away. So it looks like I might just have to exterminate them sort of the, the natural way. But guys, what do you what you typically, or what I um, heard you typically do is you get one of the cotton wool buds and what you do is you dab it in alcohol or neem oil, both of which I don't have, unfortunately. And what you do is you press it against that mealy bug and wipe it away. Now I'm going to do that last action without actually having uh, the neem oil and the and the alcohol, but at least it gets rid of the bug. So giant mealy bug there, guys. I've got to say, this is the first time. Maybe it's the second time. I can't remember. Actually, come across mealy bugs. So what you want to do is you want to dab them in and swab them off. Ah! And then what you do is normally you would wipe this with diluted neem oil or alcohol spray. It, en it ensures that any remnants of the mealy bug has been exterminated. What you should also do is once you start, once you have noticed, um, once you have noticed mealy bug, once, um, also another thing is once you have noticed a mealy bug on your plant, you should um, inspect the rest of the plant because normally one mealy bug means that there's there's an army of mealy bugs. So let's go and inspect this um, this gloriosa now to see if there are other mealy bugs, mealy bug eggs that we can we can quickly pick up. Check in behind the leaf, the front of the leaf, the back of the leaf. I have inspected him and he looks like he's doing doing okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop him back into his greenhouse and yeah guys we'll carry on doing some hot weather plant prep all right guys so now that I've watered my plants what I like to do is then um, spray them to increase the moisture and also um, keep them cool keep their leaves cool so what I do is I like to just Spray some. So here I go. And some below. So I can be a bit more liberal with the spraying uh, for the plants down here because these are mostly tropical plants. So they like to have a little bit more water around them. But normally you guys may know that I don't actually like to spray my plants with water because I find that if it, the water doesn't dry quick enough what happens is that that can make the plant leaf susceptible to rot but given it's so hot today and it's early in the morning it should give enough time for the water droplets to dry off the plant also another thing to keep in mind when spraying your plants is to know which plants you should and should not be spraying so the rule of thumb I like to use is think about where does your plant come from and what is the natural habitat for that plant is it normally a high humidity plant will it normally get a lot of um, moisture around it so for example and I know this is not this is not necessarily the best setup but I Gloriosum and my Siltipicana are more tropical plants, so spraying around them should be fine. But my Sansevieria masonia isn't necessarily a, a plant that will live in the tropics. So whilst I was spraying it, whilst I was spraying in here, um, one thing to try and do is to just I try not to spray directly on him because he probably doesn't need that much spray. Um, also the cactus, getting a little bit of water on him is fine, but I wouldn't go to town spraying him. And then my philodendron martium, um, a little bit of spraying there, but not too much because unlike a gloriosum and Sultipicana, probably doesn't need that much humidity. So I'll come here and do the same with my plants that live outside the greenhouse. My hastadium is a plant that likes to be in high humidity area so I give him a very generous spray because he's also a very big plant. Spray, spray, spray. My dragon's tail or Imperium pendatium is another tropical plant so 
I like to give him a spray as well. Spray, 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 spray. Alocasia a bit of a spray. Help him cool on cool his leaves. Whereas my Boophonate will not give a spray because he lives in a dry condition. My Alocasia and my Painted Lady give him a spray. They're tropical plants. Look how big that foliage is, guys. Spray, spray, spray. All right, guys. I think that's all, it's just spraying done. But what I'd like to do during the rest of the day, given that I'm at home today, is I'd like to come out um, maybe every couple of hours and then also give them a bit of a spray because it's it's gonna get quite hot today. And I know sometimes I like think back and like, no, I try to change my mindset. A year ago when I was like nobody, and I still think that I'm not like crazy big, but like when I was a nobody, I was like, why the, how the heck is like this person hanging? All right guys, it looks the same as this morning, but it is about 12 o'clock now and it is hot, it is hot. I just went ahead and sprayed my plants again. Wasn't much to it, it's just another sort of spray, 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 spray. But what I wanted to show you guys was what is this? What is this on my vitiforium? They look like eggs. Man, that is weird. Are these eggs, guys? That is so weird. I also moved my two plants, Viterifolium and my Silver Cloud, into the shade. Um, they were here before. It's getting a lot of sun, so just move them in because it is very hot. It is very hot, guys. It is hot. It is very hot. Just wanted to give you guys an update as to what I've been doing with my plants. My silver cloud is a bit droopy. I hope he's okay. I think it's just because of the heat, eh? One thing I also like to do, guys, I thought I'd show you these that I've collected. Um, but these plastic um, containers, you know those ones that come with your strawberries or your your blueberries? I thought these are pretty cool to keep. Um, sorry, I thought these are pretty cool to keep because these make quite good propagation um, type of containers. So when you put your sphagnum moss in there and your, your plants in there, I can't wait to use this big one actually. Because if you guys know, I've got some teeny Viterifolium seedlings, but I just imagine when they get a little bit bigger, I can use this one to grow them. But yeah, guys, if you do have these containers, oops, if you guys do have these containers, keep them because you can recycle them to be used as propagation for your plants. One thing I forgot to mention um, when I was just talking about my greenhouse is normally I have the door of the greenhouse, I normally roll it down to increase the humidity in it, but because it's so hot now, I have to roll it up because it, this will help with getting it quite aerated and letting some air in to prevent uh, rot and mold growing in here because that's a great environment for mold to grow where you have a really hot environment. During the, the winter this comes down to ensure that the temperature inside stays nice and warm for the plants and to retain humidity but during the summer um, what I like to do is I like to roll this up because it's, it can get quite hot. Hopefully you guys found these tips helpful for preparing your plants for a really hot day.